Hello, God bless you. Hope everyone is having a great day today. This is Brother David. Today we have a beautiful scripture in the book of Psalms, chapter 127, verse 1, which says, A song of degrees for Solomon, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. You know, I love the book of Psalms. You know, I've said before that I believe that from Genesis to Revelation is God's love letter to an unlovable people. But I believe the book of Psalms is our love letter to the Lord. So I just think it's such a beautiful book. And this chapter right here is a part of the Songs of Ascent that started in 120 through 134. It's believed that they would quote these Psalms as they made their ascent up to Jerusalem. Some also believe it's they, as they made their ascent up to the Temple Mount. This is one of the Psalms that they read. This is such a beautiful verse here. The psalm begins with the most important truth in establishing a house. Unless the Lord builds a house, it won't work. It is useless to construct a house without depending upon the Lord. Maybe by house, he was thinking not only about a building, but also about a family. The Lord wants us to put him first in our life, before our family, before our jobs, before everything. The Lord should be first in our life. And until the Lord is made first in our life, all attempts to establish a strong family will end in vain. The things that we do ourselves without God's authority rarely work. Although believers may not be in the construction business, we are building our lives. And as Christians, we should be trying to build a church. And I don't mean a building. I mean pointing people to Jesus. Paul had cautioned others to take care how they build on the foundation. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus said that apart from him, we can accomplish nothing. Jesus also said something similar to this verse in one of his parables. There he compared those who hear him to those who ignore him. And he compared them to those who build on a solid foundation or those who build on sand. A person can put great effort into a building, a structure, but if that foundation is weak, that building is doomed. The same truth is, applies to physical and spiritual. Only that which is based on truth and wisdom can last. Impressive intelligence, effort, and skill cannot overcome reliance on lies. Unless a person's work is grounded in truth, it will eventually vanish. The same applies to attempts to keep what we already have, whether it's a city, a nation, or an object. Defense is pointless without relying on the Lord. Guards are good to have, but the best guard we can have is the Lord. This means something more than mere words. It is one thing for a nation to step on a coin in God we trust. But unless that nation exercises their trust in the Lord, they're still ignoring him and his wisdom. So what are you building your foundation upon? If your foundation is built on Jesus, then it will stand. But if your foundation is not on Jesus, it will fail. Because if you're building your house on the foundation of things in this world, they will fail because all this world offers you is empty promises. I always say it's like a drug or an alcohol. That's like the things of this world. The drug and the alcohol, the buzz, the high they wear off. That's what everything that this world has to offer you. All it's trying to distract you with, it's going to fail you because it's all empty promises. Jesus said it like this in that parable. He said those who trust in him are building on a strong foundation. They're building on the bedrock. He says, in the, when the wind and the waves beat on the house, it will stand. But if you build it on the world and on the things of this world, these empty promises, then when the winds come and the waves beat on the house, it's going to be founded on sand. So it's going to fall. We have to ground our relationship in the Lord. It's like the little coin we talked about. Stamping in God, we trust in the coin. Unless you're actually putting your faith and trust in Jesus, it's not going to work. You, know, you could say you're a Christian, but until you put the Lord first in your life, Make him the foundation of your life. All your efforts are going to fail. Eventually, your true self is going to come to the surface. You know what I'm saying? We can fool everybody in the world. Everybody can see this outwardly, I'm a good Christian persona that we play. But we're, we cannot fool God. And if we're not putting our complete faith and trust in him, then all we're doing is, as Solomon said in the Proverbs, we're just chasing the wind, trying to grab smoke. That's what, what trying to grab everything that this world has to offer. Because you could be... In a big old house with lots of cars and a bank full of money. And you can have people all over your house. And you can still feel alone. Because you're trying to put something in this missing piece in your life. 
you're trying to fill it with something else. Your foundation is not built on bedrock. So as it says here, you're laboring in vain. We have to put our faith and trust in Jesus. He's got to be our foundation, and we have to put him first. That means growing in our personal relationship with Jesus. Not just saying a prayer and then going about your life, but seeking Jesus' plan and purpose and will for your life. Jesus said, if you don't take up your cross daily and follow me, you're not worthy of being my disciple. That means every day we die to ourselves, dying to what we want to do, but instead we're seeking what Jesus wants us to do. We're seeking the Lord's will and plan and purpose for our life, not our own. And you grow in that personal relationship. When we're building our foundation of our faith, our house, our walk with the Lord on Jesus, and we're growing in our personal relationship, and we do that by reading the Bible, getting to know Jesus more and more through reading the Scripture, by praying to Him, just talking to Him like an old friend, telling Him everything that's in our heart, not holding anything back, but not doing all the talking, allowing Him to speak, allow Him to give us His wisdom, worshiping Him in song, Building the body of Christ by sharing our testimony, telling people the good news of what Jesus did for us, encouraging one another, lifting each other up. We get to a point in a place where we can focus on God alone, where we put him at the head of everything in our life because we're seeking him entirely, we're keeping our eyes firmly set on him, not looking to the right or to the left, not allowing the things of this world to try to draw our attention away. Our foundation should be on Jesus alone. He is a firm foundation that we build upon. But before you can build a house that will stand, you have to build that foundation. So examine yourself today. What foundation are you building upon? As we talked about the other day, ask the Lord to search you, to examine your life, and to take out anything that's not of Him. So to know the right foundation to build on is you got to know the foundation, the solid bedrock. You got to know Jesus, and this is why we share the gospel at the end of every video. So if you got in this point of the video today and you don't know Jesus today, and maybe you don't want to know him, maybe you're playing games with God, maybe you intellectually in your mind know who he is, and you know what he did on the cross. But when hard times come, you're not running to Jesus for help because you don't have that firm foundation. It's like those coins. You say, in God we trust, but you're not really trusting him. And this is because you don't know him personally. You don't take the time to talk to him, to pray, to read the Bible. You don't try to take the time to get to know him. Well, I believe that you're here for a reason. I don't believe that you're here by accident. I believe the Lord has given you one more opportunity to get to know him today. And it may be your last opportunity because we don't know what tomorrow holds. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. We may not live to see tomorrow. This is why I want to introduce you to Jesus right now. I want to show you who Jesus is and what Jesus did for the cross and what it means for you. So listen to the words. Don't turn the video off just yet. Just keep listening. Accept the words of the gospel, what Jesus did for you, apply the words you love, and allow the words to change you. The gospel in a nutshell is because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world, and sin creates a wall that separates all of us from God. And this is because all of us sin and fall short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. Which means because we sin, not one of us is worthy of going to heaven. There is a punishment for sin. And because we sin, we all deserve punishment. We all deserve eternal separation from God, which means a life in hell. But here's the mercy of God. God loves you so much that God sent his only son, Jesus, who left his throne in heaven and became a flesh and blood human. He was 100% fully God and fully man. He lived a perfect sinless life. And on the cross, he became sin for us to pay for our sins, which means when he was on the cross, he put our sins on himself like a garment. Jesus took the punishment for our sins because, as I've said, there is a punishment. But we're the ones who sin. We're the ones who deserve to be punished. But instead of us being punished for our sins, Jesus, who was innocent of death because he never sinned, he took our punishment, the punishment we rightly deserve. Jesus took that punishment in our place. You see, we're all like a garment that is stained with sin. But when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and accept the words of the gospel, when you apply the words to your life and allow the words to change you, then it's like you're putting a washing machine. You're washed clean with the precious blood of Jesus. You're washed white as snow. And when you believe the gospel message and you're saved, then you put on Jesus' righteousness like a garment. And now when God looks to you, he doesn't see your sin anymore. Now God sees Jesus. The gospel message is Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day. And if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you will be saved. Whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved and saved from what? Saved from eternity in hell. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by him. Jesus is the only way that you can get into heaven. Jesus is the door to enter heaven. 
There are not multiple ways that you can get into heaven and no one else can save you. A preacher cannot deem you worthy. Your mom or dad can't confess that you've been a good person. Your works, your deeds cannot earn it. Salvation cannot be found in anyone else or anywhere else. Salvation can only be obtained by faith in Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus' blood on the cross is the ticket. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. And on the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins. He took our punishment. And Jesus' blood is what bought our ticket into heaven. Jesus' blood is what covered our sin debt, past, present, and future. And Jesus' blood is what broke down the wall that separates us from God. Jesus' blood is what redeemed us, bought us back, paid the ransom to free us from the power of sin, to free us from eternity in hell. So if you sincerely believe in Jesus and surrender your life to him, which means you're not just saying words, you're not trying to please someone, you're not looking for a good at a health free quarter, but you really do believe in who Jesus is and what Jesus did for the cross and you truly want to live for him now, then you will be saved. This is Jesus' free gift of grace that he has extended to you right now. All you have to do is reach out and grab it. This is accepted today. Because you can't earn your way to heaven, you can't be a good enough person, you can't do enough good deeds. And when you're standing face to face with God, it's not going to matter how much you've given to charity or that you think I've been a good person all my life. I've never robbed or killed anybody. Because our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. It is by grace that we are saved through faith, not of ourselves. It is a gift to God, not of works, so same man should boast. This grace is an unearned gift. We cannot earn it. We do not deserve it, which means we cannot earn our way to heaven. We don't deserve to go to heaven. We don't deserve salvation. And we don't even deserve for Jesus to come down and to die for us. But God loves us so very much that by his grace, he made a way for us to be saved. He made a way for us to have fellowship with him. So accept Jesus' free gift of salvation today, that free ticket into heaven. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Accept the words of the gospel that you just heard. Apply the words to your life and allow the words to change you so that you can build your foundation on the solid rock, Jesus. And we always follow the gospel with a dire warning of Jesus is in return because right now you can personally know Jesus for yourself. But one thing is for sure, and the Bible is clear. We are not guaranteed tomorrow you need to turn to Jesus today while he's still the time. Don't keep putting Jesus off, so whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now, why you haven't came to Jesus yet, maybe you don't think that you're good enough, saying you don't know what I've done, maybe you're waiting until the children grow up and move out, maybe you're waiting until your friends are secure, whatever excuse it may be, don't put Jesus off any longer, because there's no guarantee that you'll live to see tomorrow. And if you die before you come to Jesus when you're standing before God, it's going to be too late to make excuses why didn't come to Jesus before. So turn to Jesus today while you still the time. Today is the day of salvation. So if you'd like to be saved, we have in the description box a link to the ABCs of salvation and a sample prayer. But these are just templates and outline what you can say to be saved. It is not a repeat after me. There are no magic words to be saved. In fact, the words are not even important. But if you want to be saved, it just needs to be a sincere prayer from your heart, a sincere cry out that you cannot do this on your own, that you need a savior. What you're doing is admitting you're a sinner in need of a Savior in need of Jesus. You believe in who Jesus is and what he did for you on the cross. You repent of your sins, which means you turn away from your sins. You're having a change of heart, a change of mind. You build on that solid foundation, which will not be in vain. And whatever you may be battling right now, if you trust in the Lord and let him, if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, accept the words of the gospel, apply the words you life and allow him to change you, allow him to change you, and he can take away whatever you're struggling with if you let him. Well, I pray you got some another video. But never take my word for it. And don't seek anybody's advice. Go to the source for yourself. Because no one on this earth has the answers. Whether it's the most famous preacher or the smartest person in the world. They do not have the answers that you're looking for. Only God does and you only receive your answers through prayer by reading the Bible. And it is so very important to read the Bible for yourself. Just picking random verses, doing a Google search, listening to someone read or preach for a few minutes. You will not get the full picture. And they won't even scratch the surface of what is in the Bible. So read and discover the stories for yourself. You see, the Bible will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, struggle, whatever hard time you're going through right now. In the description box, we have several links to read the Bible for yourself. The Bible is our roadmap, our GPS, our lantern, our flashlight, whatever analogy you want to use. You see, the Bible will help you to navigate through this crazy, ever darkening world that we're living in right now. So read the Bible for yourself. And if you need prayer today, please reach out to us. We want to stand in agreement and pray for your needs. Or if you have a praise report, Please share it with us. We would love to praise Jesus right along with you for what he's doing in your life. Well, I pray you got something out of this video today. If you did, give God glory. I cannot wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow if the Lord tarries. Or we'll see you in the clouds. Look up. Our redemption is drawing nigh. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. Let's go.